Now, I said last year, and I stand by my statement, this is my favorite motorcycle Harley-Davidson has ever produced, period. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to review the 2023 Lowrider ST in White Sand Pearl. Now I said last year, and I stand by my statement, this is my favorite motorcycle Harley-Davidson has ever produced, period. This thing starts at $22,200, and in my opinion, and when you're talking Harley, I think that is a really good bang for your buck. So let's jump into the video and I'll show you what you get for that money. All right, so I'll give you guys a quick walk around of this bike. As many of you know, I was able to get my hands on one of these last year while I was in California. It was my only mode of transportation, so I ended up putting about 750 miles on it in three days. Very thankful to Harley-Davidson Corporate for that opportunity, but it made me fall in love with this motorcycle. I don't currently own one, but I can guarantee you in the next year or two, I will definitely buy one of these. Uh, I need to finish up my soft tail build. If you haven't seen that, I'm building a 2020 soft tail standard. I'll put the video link down in the description so you can check that out, but this will probably be the next bike that I build. So I'll start this review out by sitting on the bike just so you can kind of get a, a feel for what it's, it's like when you're sitting on this bike. The bars on this thing are not exactly what I want. I like them a little closer and a little taller. That said, the handling on this bike was absolutely amazing, bone stock out of the crate. Uh, I would change these, but they're not bad. I mean, like I said, I put 750 miles on it, uh, rode up in the mountains with some people, definitely the fastest I've ever gone through curves on a bike, and this thing was bone stock. So you'll see that you have the smaller size display here. Harley's been doing this for a while. Some guys are changing these, I've noticed. They're going back to the old, like, analog style Speedo. I think those look cool, and I get the idea behind it, but I personally, I don't mind this at all. This is what's on my soft tail standard, uh, and I really like the layout. I like the information that it gives me, and I don't miss my gauges, to be honest. Now, yeah, I know your RPMs are a little more accurate if you have the analog versus the digital, but... I still like this one. So I'll go through really quickly. As you can see, we've got our fuel here, your miles per hour and your mileage. So you just use this trip button right here to cycle through. You have trip A, trip B, how many miles until empty, which is a very nice feature to have, your clock. And then this is where it's gonna show your RPMs, but it is digital. So it's, it's probably not as accurate, but at the end of the day, I don't think most of us really need that perfect display and then back to your miles. Uh, all your indicator lights will be here. We won't bother going through those because there's a lot. So real quick, I thought I would show you guys my personal bike, how I've done the gauges, just to give you some ideas of what you could do for the Lowrider ST. So these are the Roland Sand Sector risers, and this is their gauge relocation. And I like it because it's adjustable here, it's adjustable here. You can also slide it up and down on the risers to get it wherever you want. I just did mine so that way it was kind of in a perfect line. I can see that really good. I am very, very happy with this rolling sand stuff. Uh, it's fairly new. I think it came out in August, so not a lot of stuff out there on the street. And obviously plenty of other options, other companies out there. Uh, Krauss makes some good stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there. This is what I ran just to give you an idea of what you could do if you change your bars. Now let's talk about the fairing for a minute. The fairing and the saddlebags are the main things that set this bike apart from the regular Lowrider S. Now this is a brand new fairing. It came out last year. It is exclusive to the Lowrider ST model and you cannot get one of these. Now if you watch say like Blockhead's video, he did retrofit one of these onto his Lowrider S. You need a VIN number from a Lowrider ST to be able to order this fairing. And from watching his videos, I can tell you it's not as easy as just bolting it on, unfortunately. I encourage you to do it because I love this fairing. Uh, a lot of guys have told me they like the FXRT or FXRP fairing better. I strongly disagree. I think Harley did an amazing job with this fairing. Uh, the vents you see down here low, I found do a great job about channeling the wind down through here. 
and I found it brings it right here and it kind of moves all that hot air that surrounds your engine, moves that out so you get a little better performance as well as keeping yourself a little bit more cool in the summertime. And then you have this vent here in the front. It does not close, but I never found a reason to have it closed. Uh, I got no buffeting of my helmet, uh, got a little bit of airflow through there about what you would want. Uh, the, sh the road glide closes now, the street glide does not. My street glide did have the feature to close this vent and a lot of people said, well, it's nice to close it when it rains. When I got stuck in the rain, I tried it, you know, open, closed, couldn't notice a difference. So I don't think that would be an issue. Now, moving over to the front end, you'll see that it's got an inverted front end. That is strongly preferred in my opinion. It handles better, it rides smoother. Uh, anything that's not inverted, in my opinion, is old technology. And yes, Harley-Davidson <laughs> does have quite a few models that don't have the inverted front end. I'm not sure why, because it is significantly better in my opinion. You'll also see that you have the dual disc front brakes. Very important to a lot of people, and I agree, it is a nice feature, but on my soft tail, I just have the single disc and I've had absolutely no issues. Granted, I don't have this big 117 engine in mind, so mine might not go quite as fast. I gotta say, this 117 out of the box, even with the stock exhaust and stuff, made so much power and is so dang quick. So if you were to just say, put a cam in this thing, put an exhaust and put a tune, you would have a really, really good package in this engine without going crazy and without spending a ton of money. Now we kind of got off track for a second, but getting back to the front end, you do have an LED headlight here in the front, but you do not have LED turn signals. And I will continue to point this out in every video that I make until Harley Davidson starts putting LED turn signals on their bike. Moving around to this side, we'll talk about the controls. So this one does come with mid controls. I'm very happy Harley Davidson did that. Every once in a while, they will throw forward controls on a bike they consider like a sport bike, say the Sportster S and that is just not an aggressive riding position. There's a reason why say like all the King of the Baggers guys run mid controls and theirs are even back a little bit more. Sport bikes run rear sets and that's because it's just more of an aggressive riding position and this bike is really fun to ride aggressively. Going back to the back of the bike, you'll see that this has what's called the clamshell bags. And before we open them up, I'll show you this because this bugs a lot of people, including myself, and that's it, they are different sizes. Now, as you can see, it's shorter on the exhaust side and they did that to clear the exhaust. However, a lot of people are gonna put a two into one pipe on this. So you would have plenty of room to have the same size bag that's on the left side of the bike. Uh, Harley could have even, they've done two into one exhaust on stock bikes before. So they could have done that just to make the bag. I have seen, there is a company out there, I don't remember their name, but they do make uh, same size bags for this bike but I'm pretty sure you have to buy both, even though the one you're gonna be buying for the left side is the exact same as the one that's on it right now. So anyway, opening these bags up, there's more storage than you think there would be. And they have these little nets, which helps keep all your stuff from falling out. Another good thing about the Lowrider ST is all you gotta do is turn this knob and these saddle bags literally just lift off the bike. So if you want a little bit more of a streamlined look, they're really easy to take off. Now, like I said, this was my only mode of transportation when I was in California. So when I would leave the hotel every morning, I was taking like a lot of my stuff because I didn't know what I would need for the day. And I found that I had plenty of space for everything I needed to put between the two bags. So I really like these. I think they look great. We'll close it and show you the side profile. They do lock here. You just stick your key in and lock them, which is a really nice feature. I'm just not a fan of soft bags, so I'm really glad Harley made these. And then starting this year, you can get these bags for non-Lowrider ST models. Uh, I'm not sure which all models off the top of my head. Unfortunately, my Softail standard does not fit these, but I know there are several bikes that will. Also, you'll notice on the back of this bike that you have your tail light and turn signal separate. Uh, there are plenty of companies that make them where it will combine them into just this one housing. Obviously you buy a new mount just because this bracket is one piece, but that really cleans the back of this bike up. So I realize we also haven't really talked too much about specs. So while I'm giving you this last walk around to kind of show you the bike, we'll talk about that. 
So with this Milwaukee 8 117, you're looking at about 103 horsepower, 125 foot-pounds of torque. This bike's about 720 pounds. So like I said, it moves pretty good making those numbers. You have the five gallon gas tank. Your seat is a solo seat. You can set this bike up for a passenger. Obviously you'll need to buy a seat and you'll also need to buy pegs. You do have the mount down there to put the pegs or you have a place to put the mount rather, but you'll have to buy pegs and a seat if you wanna run a passenger. I feel like a lot of people are gonna to wanna to do that. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at this bike. And now we're finally to the part that I'm gonna enjoy the most, which is we're gonna get this thing out and do a quick test ride and I'll kind of tell you what it's like to ride this motorcycle. Man, does it feel good to be back on this thing. I have missed this motorcycle. It absolutely pained me to turn it back in at the end of my time with it um, out in California. Like I said, guys, I will own one of these bikes eventually. Um, this thing is just me. And I feel like it's going to be a lot of you as well. Um, just the handling, the capabilities on this bike are like nothing else. We're going to go a little bit different way today. I always end up doing these test rides at the worst time where there's tons of traffic. So we'll see if we can't beat that. Also, in a little bit of a hurry today, so didn't bother to throw on gloves. Instant regret. It's not that cold, but it's cold enough where you need some gloves on. Uh, point of pointing that out was the fairing. So I'm getting very, very, very little wind. Um, you feel a little down here. There's absolutely nothing in this space. And then it starts to get really bad up here, but it is kicking over my helmet. Again, I'm 5'11", so if that helps you decide, obviously you can change your windshield if you need to, but I mean, this thing feels really good as is, but it offers nothing in the way of hand protection. Your hands are still very much in the wind. Uh, same thing if you throw some T-bars or something, you're gonna have that same issue. And this brings back memories. These little, even just these little curves here. This bike just feels like it wants to be thrown into them. Uh, I know a lot of people have reviewed this bike and I've watched a lot of them and I've yet to see any bad reviews or see anyone say anything different than what I'm saying. This thing is just good. We'll open it up a little bit since we have a little stretch here. Now we're not trying to get a ticket. <laughs> We're also not trying to dog on someone's future bike. Um, a little bit of a spoiler alert. So this is a shout out to all of those people who watch until the test ride, or even if you just skip to the test ride. Point being, you're gonna get a little bit of news early, and that's this bike has some big plans for it. So Rocky, that owns the dealership that I do all this content with, Tim's Harley Davidson in Anderson, South Carolina, is going to do a very, very special build on this bike, and I'm doing a very special build on another dealership bike. I'm not gonna unveil the bike yet. I'll do that in a separate video, but we are both going to build bikes through the dealership. It won't be a personal bike of mine. It's one I'm building through them. And then we're going to ride them to Milwaukee for the 120th anniversary. So if any of you guys plan to be there, please let me know. It'd be rad to meet up with some of you guys. Also, I know it's a little late notice, but I will be at the Mama Tried show. Unfortunately, not with the motorcycle. I'm flying in just for the show and then flying out. So if you're gonna be there, hit me up for that one as well. Now, back to the motorcycle. Again, it just feels effortless. You know, you get to the stoplight here, move it around. It, I mean, there's no weight to it. it. It just feels super good. Tons of torque and this 117. Takeoff is not a problem. I'm normally not a lane splitter. It's not legal here in the state that I live in, South Carolina. But when I travel to California, typically, I don't split lanes, but on this past trip I did. And even with this fairing and bags, this thing felt, I mean, it was narrow enough, didn't give me any issues, didn't feel sketchy at all. Uh, I know a lot of you probably watch um, Lance Corey on the Thrash and Supply channel, know that they're building a, I guess, shop bike, company bike, whatever, which is a Lowrider ST. It's, they said the same thing, you know, splitting lanes, a little more hairy than no fairing, no bags, but still able to do it. We'll open it up a little bit more. 
I wish I could really open it up for you guys because I'm telling you it has a ton of get up and go. Now as I said your controls are mid controls. I don't know if you can see this on the camera kind of where my knees do come a little bit over the tank. I think Matt Laidlaw may have mentioned. I mean I think that dude's like 6'6 six, six or something. So clearly his knees are going to come up a lot over the tank. I don't really mind that because I'm riding curves and stuff. I tend to hug the tank for more control on the bike anyway. So I don't mind that. Uh, foot position feels comfortable for me. I would throw on a crash bar on the front, a straight bar, mostly just so I have somewhere to throw my feet out um, on longer rides to stretch them out. This is a decent little turn here, so we'll kind of throw it in here. Dude, this thing just feels so good. Stock everything and just... <laughs> I'm buying one of these bikes. I just, there's no way I can't. It is so good. And you know that I am not just a Harley fanboy. I have been very critical of them, uh, probably to my demise uh, as far as doing future <laughs> projects with them or getting special treatment or getting to you know go see stuff early or whatever. But I think that's why a lot of people watch. That's what I'm reading in the comments, at least. You know, people like that. Even though I'm associated with the dealership and I have done the you know the one thing with Harley Corporate that I still speak out about things that I don't like. I promise you guys I will always do that. I will never compromise my integrity or the integrity of the channel just to get free stuff or special treatment. If I like something just like this Lowrider ST, obviously I am fanning out over this thing. It's because I genuinely truly like this motorcycle. On the stuff I don't like, you will hear that too. Um, I just think that's the way to do things. So we'll use that opportunity with the truck blocking to get back out here. Guys, I don't know what I could say about this bike that's not already been said. It's just good. It's good everywhere. Um, I've been on the interstate with it. I've been in the mountains with it. I've been on back roads with it. I've been pretty much anywhere you can take a motorcycle. And this thing was phenomenal the entire time. Now also letting you guys in on not really a secret but so I typically do several reviews in one day and then go do all the test rides back to back so I'm on the way to go get the Roguelide special right now to do the test ride on it and I kind of wish I had done it in the opposite order so that I had saved this thing for the end it's just that good it's that fun um, also if I knew I could get away with it and I didn't have other things to do I would probably take off on this bike for maybe 30 45 minutes and just fall in love with it even more if that's even possible now as far as people that maybe this bike is not for um, there's not many now if you're gonna really be tearing up the highway and doing like tons of like multi-state trips cross-country trips whatever there's a chance you're gonna want the touring bike so you have a little bit more suspension a little bit more bike underneath you as well as a little bit more storage you can add a tour pack to this bike and get a little bit more but if you're touring with the passenger still the clamshell bags don't offer that much storage depending on how you pack um, also same thing if, if you're a, a bigger guy and you're gonna have a bigger passenger on the back as well you may want to go with that touring bike just to have a little more bike underneath you <laughs> there's really no other way to say that um, nothing wrong with it just something to point out but if you're like me and you ride the majority of the time solo and you like to have fun and be on a sporty bike this is definitely the bike for you that's going to be it for this one, guys. Um, I will catch you guys in the next video. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. It really helps me out. Also, I really, really, really need people to subscribe. I think something like 88% of the people that watch my videos regularly are not subscribed. So that would help me out way more than you know. Um, that's it, guys. Let's, let's wrap this up. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.